in this video, I wanna show you how to clean the back side of a seat. Not that that's overly complicated, but I do wanna address it. And I'll also be giving you some tips on how to make sure you clean the stains after the carpeting or the seats or the floor mats dry. So, you know, a lot of times like you hear about people say, hey, the stains are coming back up after it dries. I'll let you know, I'll give you some tips on how to address that as well. Okay, so when it comes to cleaning the back side of seats, sometimes it can be a bit different depending on the type of seat that it is. So like here on this part, there's really no cushion or like backing plate, I guess you could say behind it or anything. So it's just like emptiness, like you see I'm pushing it in. And then here you actually have some cushion, some backing blade, something, something. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. And then obviously this can be cleaned as per usual because it's the same material all around. So on here, I'm not gonna extract this part just because like, one, it's like, you don't wanna keep on pushing it in. And I just feel like the water seeps in way more when it's like empty, like when it's just like the fabric itself, as opposed to like when there's fabric with like something behind it. So here on these, like I'll, like this, I'll first clean it with the drill brush and APC and then wipe it down. And then maybe I'll extract this part if it really needs it. But if not, I'll just agitate with the drill, I'll just agitate with a cleaner and drill brush, mop it down with a towel, and then if needed later, once I get the steamer running, if it still needs more attention, that's when I'll put it on. But typically it cleans fairly well with just agitation and a brush. Well, we're just agitating with a brush. And you also don't want to over, over soak this area too, again, cause there's nothing behind it. So I just feel like it's gonna end up like not sacking more, but it just penetrates more and it, it'll take longer to dry, I guess. I don't know. That's just my, my theory behind it. So I don't put as much liquid here, but I will put more liquid here because there's like something behind it. And then here as per usual, I'll put whatever amount. So not as much when there's nothing behind it, a little more the same here as like when I'm cleaning anything else. And then I'll just put a little bit right there because I don't want to overly soak it. And then take a drill brush or whatever brush you're using. on areas that I just need a little bit more of a cleaner. Now here on this middle section, I'm not putting much down pressure. Like I'm not, I'm barely just letting it skim over the surface because I don't want to push it in and create this like, you see there's this, this edge right here. And the more you just press it down, the more just, you know, you don't want to rip this part. Not that you will, but if it's already being ripped because it's like it's been pressed so many times, it will create some fraying right here. So you don't want to, over, you don't want to go super aggressive on this section. And just like that, take your towel and mop it down. Again, we we'll, we'll might revisit this later. Well, I will. You're watching this video. I'll revisit this later. And if it needs a, if it needs a more thorough agitation, then I'll put the steamer on it with a attachment, with a, with a brush attachment, and work on it. But I'm gonna say this is probably good enough here, and we can just stop it right here. And remember, when you're cleaning any seats, the best way to know if, if it's actually clean is to see if it dried. Like when it's wet, it's gonna look better than when it's not wet, meaning when it's dry. Uh, some stains might reveal themselves again. So to be sure, like that's why I always knock out anything that needs to be extracted first. So like the carpet, the floor mats, the carpeting, because if I wait to the end of the detail to do that, and when I'm done, the interior is still wet, meaning I'm not seeing the true condition when it's dry, then there's a high probability that some stains need more attention and I'm not able to identify that because I waited till the end to do it, meaning it's not dry by the time I'm done. And then a few hours later, that stain might come back up, but it didn't really come back up. It just, you didn't pay attention and didn't address it again. So that's why do the fabric stuff first that needs to be extracted so it dries. So that way you can inspect and see, okay, this needs a bit more attention. That's like, I, and I did that because I used to not do that when I first started. 
and I would have those problems of like, oh man, like now I see some, some stains, be, like you know, hours later, because now it's drying. So do the extraction first on whatever needs to be extracted, let it dry, and then touch up those specific areas that need attention. Me personally, is I extract everything, and once I extract it, I'm done with the extractor. Like, even if some stains do come up again, I'm not gonna use the extractor, I'm going to use the steamer. So I extract everything, put the extractor up, bring the steamer out, and whatever little areas do need attention, I'll just put the brush attachment on the steamer and work on it like that. That way I can put a, a, a piece of equipment up, I can clean my work area, my work environment, and so I can, and the steamer is strong enough to just touch up those specific areas. So. Hopefully that video helped. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns about anything that I covered. Let me know in the comment section or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Check the description box for those guides and I'll see you on the next one.